Okay, hello dear friends. Good afternoon. Such a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. This was a couple of weeks ago. I went to San Francisco Légion d'Honneur, legend of honor, legend of l legend of honor, the Dion Art Museum. And uh, there was an exhibition there. It's um, uh, Rubens' exhibition. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, three or four years ago, I went to Anvers, Antwerp in Belgium and uh, visited the Grand Church and saw his artwork. And uh, Ruben was uh, a very talented and fantastic artist, but his life was quite uh, miserable, as I heard. He, he, he had his temper problem, and he could not control his tempo, temper and, uh, and uh, got into trauma. And, uh, well, this painting we will not talk uh, uh, this video, we will not talk about Ruben's story, but talk about the story of this painting. This painting is called Arrow and Leandro. Arrow is uh, it's written as a hero, H-E-R-O. I think it should be pronounced without the H pronounced, without the H pronounced, so Arrow and Leandro. And it was a love story. Story goes like this. Arrow was a beautiful, beautiful young lady, and she was a priestess. Priest, priestness, priestness. Anyway, she was a person who served in, th this was uh, um, a Greek mythology story, and uh, through that I listened to Greek mythology audiobook and documentary and learned about this story. I will just talk as much as I, I talk, as if telling a story. So Ero was the most beautiful lady in the world, beautiful most beautiful young lady and young girl. And she served in the temple, so she was not supposed to fall in love. She was not supposed to to have a relation with, with men, with a, a, a romantic relation. And uh, she always stayed in his t in her temple, in her uh, in uh, in uh, uh, sea cliff. There was a tower. She always stayed there. And uh, Leandro, one day she went out in a beautiful spring summer time. She went out, and uh, Leandro saw her, and. Uh, fell in love with her, head over heel, just out of control. And he got a chance to talk with, uh, with Errol, and then the two of them fell in love. And um, Leandro was so much falling in love, he wanted to see Errol. And Leandro was, lived on the other side of the ocean. The ocean have a narrow cliff between them. And uh, uh, Leandro was in the Turkey side, and, um, and uh, Ero was on the, 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 the Greek side. And uh, to see her, he had to swim over. So the two lovers made a decision, made an agreement. I, Arrow said, I will turn on the light on top, on top of my uh, tower, and when you see the light, you come, you swim to, swim to me, and we can spend night together. And Leandro did exactly that. That, and when the light turned on, the um, uh, Leandro will will swim, seeing the light, knowing the direction, swim over and see her. And they spend the night together. And uh, when the sunset, sunset comes back, Leandro will 
go away. And the next night, he saw the light, he will swim, and before light comes, before day comes, he would go away. So they kept like this, a beautiful summer, full of romance, flower, full of uh, poetry. They spent the summer together. And then winter came. The winter became cold, and the water was uh, cold and windy, and the water was tough. So there was one night extremely cold, extremely windy. And uh, let me see. Yes, extremely cold, extremely windy. And uh, <coughs> Arrow was thinking about uh, Leandro. She so, so, so want to see him, but she also cares so, so, so much about him. She did not want him to risk his life to swim over because it was a storming, cold, windy night. So she did not turn on the light. And Leandro, on the other side of the ocean, waited, 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 waited the whole night through. He didn't see the, he didn't see the light. And on this side, Arrow thought, thought, thought. And at the very last, the love, the desire for seeing her lover took the better part of her, and she turned on the light. Leandro saw the light jump into the water and swam, 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 and put all his effort. And the wind was big and strong, and the wave was high and powerful, and the, the night was dark. But there was this light guiding him. He swam, 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 and almost reaching to the foot of the tower, a huge wind blow and blow off the light. Leandro was heartbroken, and he made all his effort. He saw the light, and suddenly the light disappeared. At this moment, Leandro lost his hope, and he gave up, and he died. He died under this huge wave. The next morning, Arrow, the first thing, she went out to sea, and she went to the beach and found the nymphs were holding Leandro. And Leandro has died. As soon as Arrow saw the dead, bo lifeless body of Leandro, of her lover, she jumped into the water and she died. So in this painting, you can see the contrast of the pink, soft, tender love body of nymph in contrast with the green, lifeless, but beautiful body of Leandro. Green, blue, lifeless, but still in such beautiful shape. And on the right corner, you can see the lady jump into the water. So that is the story. And full of passion, full of power. And uh, the story stop here became uh, a Greek classic mythology story. But it did not stop here. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, it became inspiration for many generations of uh, artist, of po poetist, of novelist, of uh, poets, and uh, 
uh, Shakespeare did his theater, a lot of theaters, based on this or inspired by this. There were numerous works inspired by this. And another thing is about uh, 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 Lord Byron. I knew Lord Byron. I always think when I was young, we heard about Lord Byron, such a dandy boy, poetry, um, romantic, poetic, romantic. And uh, also, um, he fathered uh, Ada Lovelace, which was the first computer, female computer programmer, as we right now regard it. But anyway, uh, Lord Byron was not famous for, for, for his uh, physical activity. I mean, he was physically fit and uh, uh, such a young dandy dandy good-looking guy, but uh, he was not f famous for physical activity. He saw this story, he read about this story, and he was inspired. He decided to swim over. So he swam from Turkey, on the edge of Turkey, to Greece, swim across the, the channel. And uh, I remember 10 or 20 years ago, I went to Turkey, and on Turkey, you can see the Euro-Asia link. There was a, a point they are almost connected. It's a, a, a quite narrow uh, channel or, or water, water gap. So he swam, and he did it. Uh, Lord Byron did it, and... Uh, the, the, the record was not uh, in his speed, but in his, uh, uh, his spirit. And later on, this became uh, an activity, actually, in Turkey. Every year, in a certain time, I forgot what time, but in summertime, the Turkish people, the Turks, will swim across the ocean and became um, a romantic or a sportive activity. <laughs> okay, so that is the story for today, and um, I hope uh, this is uh, an interesting story. Go to museum, go to see things, and find the root and find the story of it. I love you, I really do. Do 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 do, do do do. Bye bye, friend.